Here's my question for you this Monday. Have you ever wondered if there's ever going to be a cure for fibromyalgia? And if so, what do you think is taking them so long? Why can't they just figure out what the cause of this terrible chronic condition is? Where's it coming from? Now with fibromyalgia, we have this condition that involves massive widespread chronic pain. And this pain literally occurs everywhere in the body. And there's even tender points all over the body associated with specifically fibromyalgia. Not only that, but it tends to involve the digestive system, causing things like IBS, chronic diarrhea or constipation. It usually involves the mood, causing depression, anxiety, maybe insomnia. And it often involves things like brain fog, poor concentration, or even poor memory. Sometimes some people complain that they're hot all the time or that they're cold all the time, or that they're going back and forth between this. Sometimes they're hot, sometimes they're cold. Sometimes they get headaches, stiffness, tingling, or even numbness. And it almost always involves major chronic fatigue. Now, if you really want to get to the heart of fibromyalgia and where this true cause is, then we have to utilize an approach that looks at the body as a whole. We can't look at just one thing as you've seen, there's all these symptoms, all these systems of the body that are being involved. So we need an approach that takes into account everything and all of those systems. And yet frequently we get caught in this mindset of looking at the condition from only one perspective, perspective at a time. It's like seeing a doctor who specializes in the nervous system or the gut or the immune system. The body of somebody living with fibromyalgia becomes a lot like trying to renovate a dilapidated house. After, after years of neglect, the windows are broken, the roof leaks, the plumbing leaks, so now the basement is filled with water, the carpet and the floorboards are, are waterlogged and full of mold, the wiring in the house is burnt out, the heating and cooling system no longer works properly. So you decide to get some expert advice. And one expert says, the biggest problem with these old homes is the moldy carpet. So you go and you tear up the carpet and you replace it. And it feels good for a little while. Things seem better. You can walk around barefoot. It feels nice. But then it rains. And because you chose not to fix the roof first, water leaks in and destroys the carpet. And now you're right back to where you started. Or maybe you go with another expert's advice and you decide to fix the heating system first. So now the, warm can be uh, the home can be warm and hospitable. But eventually, the heating system just breaks down because you didn't fix the windows and there's cold constantly coming in and now the heating system is overworked. As you can see, without proper context and without a proper order of operations, most of the effort in fixing this house is being completely wasted. And as a result of applying this level of thinking to the body, people now believe that there is no cure for fibromyalgia. It's like believing a home cannot be comfortable because you install the furnace while the windows were still broken. When in reality, if you want to make improvements that last, you'd start by sealing up the windows. You'd fix the roof and then you would start cleaning out the water and drying the home. And at that point, then you could hire a crew to come and replace the carpet, clear out the mold damage, replace the damaged wood and the leaky pipes. And you could finally repair the electrical system and put a new heating and cooling system. As you can see, all these features overlap. All of them contribute to making this home a comfortable and livable place. But they must be done in the proper order. Otherwise, the home may become damaged and unlivable again. This is a lot like a flare up or a relapse that you'd find in fibromyalgia. So when we're looking at properly overcoming fibromyalgia, the body needs to be treated in a similar context with a similar order of operation. We start with regulating the lymphatic system and dealing with bile films, key aspects of the immune system and how the immune system works. We can then move on to gut dysbiosis and the health of the digestive system and any damage that has occurred there. From here, we can get into dis dysregulated nitric oxide associated with ele elevated cortisol from chronic stress levels. And at that point, we can start looking at dysregulated prostaglandins and platelet adhesion, and then myochondrial myopathies, venous insufficiency, low DHEA, dysregulation of the ACTH, you know, the, the whole hormonal system. Many people wonder which of these areas they have, which of these areas that I mentioned are their primary issue. And in most cases, when someone has suffered with fibromyalgia for many years, what may have started out as one primary problem, one primary system or area has led to damage in other areas and eventually affects all eight of the areas that I mentioned before. And this is where the challenge gets perceived when dealing with fibromyalgia. It becomes 
this mishmash of numerous symptoms that just seem to wax and wane without rhyme or reason. Sometimes you get these certain pains or symptoms that will feel worse only to start to get better as other sy symptoms become worse again. It becomes this vicious and frustrating cycle of getting treatment and getting treatment to start to feel, it starts to feel like, like a dog chasing its tail only to never actually catch it. The different pains and different symptoms all point to different problems in different parts of the body or different systems of the body. That's why some pains will feel dull, dull some will feel sharp, some will feel heavy, some will feel burning. Some might, pains might seem to wander from place to place while others just seem to feel bad in the morning. Some may feel bad in the afternoon or the evening, or maybe only when you're tired. Now that's why when we work with somebody who's dealing with fibromyalgia, we have found that it works best to address these problems in the proper order. And that over time, most people can take care of these areas on their own. This becomes the key to them overcoming the pain and fatigue and the other plaguing symptoms of fibromyalgia. So why hasn't a cure been found? It's because people are not even looking at the disease. They're looking only at one aspect or one system rather than focusing on the collective whole. Looking at the whole body and treating it properly is the only way to truly overcome fibromyalgia.